Studio 345 students were given the opportunity to view a photography exhibition at UNCC Center City and then met with and interviewed the artist. The artist, Brazilian photographer Pedro Lobo, documented the favelas, architecture of survival in Rio de Janeiro. Seeing this work and interviewing Pedro Lobo inspired Studio 345 students to pose the question, what is the extent of Charlotte's homeless population and what is being done to address the issue? The students of Studio 345 have produced a 10-minute documentary on homelessness in Charlotte. The film examines the effects of homelessness on adults, children, and the family members who love them. The film also shows the city's homeless population through the eyes of local organizations such as Urban Ministry, who are working to better understand the issues surrounding homelessness and poverty, and the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, which is often a last resort when the homeless run afoul of the law. I am a sister. I am a brother. I am a neighbor. I am a friend. I am the homeless. Charlotte is the largest city in North Carolina, with a population estimated to a little over 750,000. Although one of the largest financial centers in the U.S., chronic homelessness in Charlotte exists including men, women, and even children. Students of Studio 345 learn more about Charlotte's homelessness after visiting the Center City Building where the work from the students at the UNC Charlotte School of Architecture and its Master of Urban Design program is displayed. These residential models were created as a response to the exhibition of Brazilian photographer Pedro Lobo. Let's take a look at his exhibition and hear what he has to say. Well, my name is Pedro Lobo. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a photographer. I've always been a photographer. Uh, and I'm here in Charlotte to uh, show my work entitled Architect uh, Architecture of Survival. Uh, it's um, a series of images about the architecture of the Brazilian favelas, especially in the city of Rio de Janeiro, where I used to live. It's all pretty bad because uh, most, most of the problems are related to sanitation, I think. The biggest problem, which is clean water and, uh, and uh, sewage. Uh, perhaps the, this picture behind uh, with a kid lying on the floor, I was literally standing on top of a uh, a piece of wood floating on human sewage. So it's pretty, it's pretty bad. When the government establishes a new neighborhood to transfer people from the favela into a new neighborhood, it's usually very far away from the jobs. Uh, it's far from, from neighbors and friends and all that. Uh, and uh, a lot of problems uh, were derived from that as well. After being inspired by Pedro's exhibition, half of our students visited the men's shelter to interview homeless men, and the other half handed out bottles of water before interviewing an administrator of Urban Ministry. My name is Maria Mazzocco and I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA with the Artworks program at Urban Ministry Center. Urban Ministry Center got started about 15 years ago when four churches came together and realized that there was a need in the community to help serve our homeless neighbors. What is its current mission? The Urban Ministry Center is an interfaith organization dedicated to bringing the community together to end homelessness one life at a time. In our main building, we offer counseling services that can help people get connected to other social services in the communities. We have a job center where people can get on the computer, check their email, fill out applications, make a resume. We have our community works program where we, have, we offer art, soccer, running, choir, and a community garden as a way for people to come together. And we also serve lunch to about 400 people a day. 
Why in a country of red, white, and blue do people not have a home or no job to do? Why is it so easy to do nothing and something, sitting around just living off nothing? Everyone can't be rich and everyone can't be poor. It's just not the way the economy has things in store. But what if we could lift some spirits and lift some heads and give someone a place, a warm blanket in bed? What if the whole world can have one big smile and we can make a home for every mother and child? But I could ask what if over a hundred times, but would that make anyone heart any kind? In this country, there's nothing we can really do. You have to think we live every day in red, white, and blue. My lowest point is sleeping uptown on the bench. Like last night, I didn't even have no covers. I'm uptown on the bench. You know, I'm drawing a little bit, and then I go to sleep, and it was pretty cold. That's my lowest point. The only reason why I'm on the street is because even though I, I know there's alcohol treatments here, I fail them even simpler. Most of the homeless, I mean, typically get arrested for misdemeanor charges. I'm, I'm assuming just based on the loitering, the trespassing, the drinking. You want to just, I mean, just sort of, and they're in and out of out of jail at times. Um, I wouldn't say, I couldn't give an accurate percentage of how many homeless are in jail. Um, you know, we're police officers, our job is to enforce the law, so it's enforcement. We do have enforcement actions that, that we take at times. Um, but the, but the majority of things that we try to do is partner with the, with the shelter, partner with the district attorney's office to really find, like Paul was saying, an answer um, for their problems if they have some. I went to the shelter again from the YWCA from the shelter, I begin working with Housing Works here that we're standing in front of. And along with the help of my sponsor, uh, Mario Johnson, who is also my very best friend, um, and Kevin Edwards, Miss Caroline, there's so many people here that care about people in general. They don't judge. They simply put their hand out and it's a person's choice whether to take that hand and accept the help or to let the hand go. Now it was time to find solutions for ending homelessness. So we learned about the Moore Place, which is the first permanent supportive housing residential complex. Moore Place is different in the sense that its mission is more than to put a roof over someone's head. By the way, uh, our shelter systems are overflowing with people. So it's not that we don't need shelters. The issue though is what more Place is trying to do is it's trying to get people on their feet. You know, um, it's one thing, it's sort of like if you go to a, an emergency room, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna go and they're gonna try to deal with the immediate situation that you have. And that's what our shelters do. They deal with the immediate situation which is someone's out on the street. But what uh, more places like is it's like going to your family doctor. It's, it's somebody who's trying to treat the underlying cause of, of what's causing you to be homeless in the first place while they're putting a roof over your head. And that's something that is very unique to more place, but it's something that I think can be replicated in other parts of our community. Then there is the Relatives, which not only provides temporary housing for runaway youth, but it is also a place for children whose parents live in homeless shelters and young adults who are transitioning from foster care to being an independent adult. So how can you help? Volunteer at your local soup kitchen, mobile food program, shelter, or religious center. Donate clothing, toys, money, recyclables, and any necessities needed for good hygiene. Volunteer your time and energy to cleaning, but above all, treat the homeless with respect, and don't just ignore them. Show them that someone truly does care. I 
I am a sister. I am a brother. I am a neighbor. I am a friend. I am the homeless.